So hello, uh, I'm Andrin. Uh, I'm from UIC. This work was done while I was a postdoc at Duke University. Uh, and this is joint work with Darius Suchu and Radu San from Stony Brook University. So what I'll be talking about is Wink, which is a new deniable secure messaging uh, framework. Um, so in this work, we, uh, what we build is a plausibly deniable end-to-end -end encrypted messaging service. Um, so I probably don't have to spend too much time talking about end-to-end -end encrypted messaging here. Almost all secure messaging services today uh, use end-to-end -end encryption in some form or the other. And at a high level, uh, most of these messaging services encrypt each uh, individual new message with a new key. And these keys never leave the device. So uh, message confidentiality is preserved while the message is in transit. Um, however, as with any end-to-end -end encrypted system, um, your message con confidentiality is preserved only as long as the adversary does not have access to your keys. Um, and in recent times, there have been many instances where attacks have tried to leak these keys from the uh, user devices. Uh, this could be simple attacks where users or um, device vendors themselves have been coerced to uh, hand over keys or at least attempts have been made. Um, or these could be more sophisticated attacks where you have spywares exploiting vulnerabilities in messaging applications or um, some people suspect there are backdoors into some of these really widely used uh, messaging applications. So the central question of this work is how do we really make uh, secure messaging truly private in the face of these kind of attacks? Um, and one solution is to um, not only to, to protect message confidentiality to completely hide the fact that you have done messaging in the first place. Um, and uh, there are different flavors of research that have tried to do this before. Uh, so this research lies in the spectrum of being completely um, theoretical to completely practical. So on the theoretical end of the spectrum, you have things like deniable encryption or network stenography. Uh, on the more practical end of things, you have OTR messaging, uh, you have ephemeral messages. Um, and all of these solutions that you see here ha um, solve a subset of the problems that I described before. Uh, they come with their own uh, share of pros and cons. But all of these solutions have one major drawback, which is uh, they do not retain any guarantees when your device is compromised. So most of the solutions you see here um, try to handle indistinguishability at a network level. And so when your device gets compromised by an adversary, they can just simply read your messages from the message buffers and so on. Um, um, and so to, to, um, to kind of get around the problem, in this paper, we introduce the notion of plausibly deniable messaging. So plausible deniability as a concept has been used before um, in building secure storage systems in, anom uh, in anonymous communication. Um, and at a high level, a plausible deniability system allows a user to perform a certain action and then to deny to an adversary that this action has actually been performed. Um, and a plausible deniability system should ensure that the adversary is not able to prove with any non-negligible advantage that the user is lying. So in this uh, large spectrum of having perfect privacy where the, where the adversary has no clue that something has been done, and no privacy where uh, the adversary has, uh, uh, knows everything that the user has done, plausible deniability somewhere sits directly in the middle. So I'm going to give you an example of how we envision this plausibly deniable messaging framework to work, uh, function in practice. So say Alice wants to send a message to Bob asking about a protest that she plans to attend tonight. Uh, but later, if an adversary comes and coerces her to hand over her device and her keys, um, she wants to deny that she actually sent this message. So what she's going to do is she's going to select another innocuous public uh, message, uh, such as asking about the Super Bowl. Um, and she's going to encrypt both of these messages with different keys and um, send this bundle of cipher text over to Bob. Now, when the adversary comes and asks her for her device and her keys, she just simply provides uh, the key for her public message and she denies having any other key encrypting a hidden message. And our plausibly deniable messaging framework should uh, make it possible uh, for Alice to do this without the adversary having any way to prove that uh, Alice is lying with non-negligible advantage. So let's formalize this adversary. So we are talking about a very strong adversary here that can capture all your encrypted communication transcripts. It can also partially compromise your device. So um, we have gone into a lot of details of what we mean by partial compromise. But for the purposes of this talk, you can just think of this as the adversary compromises everything in your system, except for some small code that is running in a trusted execution environment. The adversary can also coerce you to hand over your encryption keys. Um, and the adversary is computationally bounded, which means you know, standard cryptographic assumptions will hold against this uh, adversary. Now, before I uh, detail how Wink works, let me provide you with some design intuitions. Um, so in Wink, we do not really build a new messaging application from scratch because that defeats the point of plausible deniability if you have some non-standard software running in your system uh, whose main purpose is to do hidden messaging. Instead, what we do is we use standard messaging applications uh, and we enhance it to provide it with some additional functionalities. And there are several reasons why we do this. 
Primarily by doing so, we avoid redesigning ways of coming up with new uh, ways to you know, set up reliable and authenticated communication channels. Instead, we can use the communication channels used by these applications to do both uh, public and hidden messaging. Now, given any standard of the shelf messaging application, we make some modifications so that we can uh, inject messages into this, publication, uh, uh, into this public communication channel covertly. And by covertly, I mean that when you inject these messages, it should have no observable changes to your on-wire message uh, communication. Um, it should have no changes to your execution pattern and so on. So just by looking at your communication transcripts, looking at your execution transcripts, an adversary should not be able to say that you have injected some messages into the communication channel. Thirdly, all the modifications we make to this application should have a non-hidden use case, which means that the only reason you're making these modifications should not be because you want to do hidden messaging, because that again defeats the purpose of doing anything, any plausible deniability, because that again means that you have some non-standard software and that's going to raise suspicion. Finally, we want this solution to have almost negligible performance overheads and the integration cost of the solution should be low because some of these applications are very widely deployed. So if you have low integration costs, then that would be nice and uh, make uh, deployment more ubiquitous. So in a nutshell, Wink is a library that implements cryptographic operations for E2E apps, and Wink runs as a trusted application inside a TE. Um, our TE of choice is TrustZone, just because it's a widely available TE for mobile devices. Uh, and the way this works is that the messaging application runs virtually unchanged uh, on the untrusted part of your system, uh, and it implements all its own functionalities except for the low-level cryptographic operations, for which it relies on the uh, Wink library. And by low-level cryptographic operations, I mean things like you know, performing encryption, decryption, selecting random coins, and so on. Now, one thing I should mention here is that by doing this design, we are not redesigning the wheel in any way. Um, untrusted applications relying on trust in, ter trusted services for performing uh, sanitized cryptographic operations is not something new. So on Samsung phones, uh, you have uh, applications like Samsung Pay, which use trusted services like Keystore uh, to perform sanitized cryptographic operations. So we are porting that idea to E2E apps to perform uh, more sanitized cryptographic operations. In addition, uh, Wink, the Wink library can also inject hidden messages into the public communication by replacing the random coins, such as your IVs or SOLs used in your authenticated uh, encryption systems uh, with encrypted hidden messages. And as long as we are using some in CPA secure encryption uh, system for encrypting your hidden message, um, this should be virtually indistinguishable to an adversary. So there are some very good reasons why we think this design works. So first of all, as you can see, um, Wink has a real use case, which is providing sanitized cryptographic operations, even if you're not interested in doing any kind of hidden messaging. Secondly, you do not need to change anything in your app. Uh, the app retains all its own functionality. Usability is not hampered in any way. And as I will show you a little bit later, this comes with almost negligible overheads compared to you know, messaging without any kind of uh, Wink in place. Finally, we have also integrated Wink with two pretty popular messaging applications in Signal and Telegram. And in both cases, we had to only modify um, around 70 lines of code to do this in like a code base of around 100,000 lines of code. Okay, so uh, before I describe Wink, let me give you a little bit of a quick introduction of what TrustZone is. So TrustZone is a system-wide hardware isolation mechanism on ARM processors. So uh, TrustZone partitions all your system resources into two compartments, a normal world and a secure world. Um, and at a software level, all your untrusted applications, your untrusted OS runs in the normal world, while a small set of trusted applications that have been verified by the vendor runs inside the secure world. Um, and TrustZone ensures that while the CPU is operating in the secure mode, running a trusted application, the normal world uh, components have no access to your system resources. So in principle, TrustZone pr uh, provides complete isolation between your trusted and your untrusted components. And this is uh, the feature that we will leverage in uh, the Wink design. So Wink operates in two modes of operation. Um, and in Wink, the Wink library itself runs inside the secure world, while the messaging application runs almost unchanged inside the normal world. Um, so these two modes of operation can be selected based on a password. Um, in the public mode of operation, the user is not interested in doing any kind of hidden messaging. In this case, what the user does um, is just inputs a message into your messaging application like you would do today. Uh, the messaging application then forwards this message to your uh, Wink library or executing in the secure world, which performs your low-level cryptographic operations like encrypting the message using some random point generated, say, through a PRNG. Uh, then the messaging application forwards this message uh, to the receiver device, again, with its own networking in uh, place. 
the messaging application on the receiver end decrypts this message um, using its own Wink library and displays this message to the user um, through a normal world interface. So this is very similar to what happens today, except for the fact that your low-level cryptographic operations are performed by Wink. In the public hidden mode uh, operation, um, the sender ha also has the capability to inject some hidden messages. And in this case, what the sender does is directly inputs the hidden message into the secure world. And we have built a special secure world a UI interface to do this. Uh, this message is then processed by the Wink library, which means that it's encrypted with an NCPS secure encryption scheme. Um, in addition, the sender also inputs a public message, which is going to act like a cover traffic here. Um, and the messaging library forwards this message um, to, uh, to the Wink library, which now encrypts this message, but uses the encrypted hidden message as your random coin. Um, then you forward the cipher text to the receiving device. In this case, as you can observe, both the encrypted hidden message and encrypted, uh, uh, sorry, the encrypted public message and the encrypted hidden message masquerading as a pub, uh, random coin is sent over the communication channel. On the receiver end of things, um, the, uh, the public message is displayed through your normal world interface while uh, your hidden message is displayed through your uh, secure world interface. So obviously when I've been describing this design, I glossed over a lot of challenges such as how do we do key management, how do we build these secure UI interfaces, um, and how do we deal with things like normal world OS compromise where the normal world components can still uh, have some ability to monitor secure world execution through side channels. But I won't, be ha I won't have the time to go into this in more detail. So if you're interested, I'll uh, encourage you to take a look at the paper. So we implemented Wink on a development board, and the only reason we did this is because um, uh, on commercial trust zone enable enabled devices, only the device vendor has the ability to install um, trusted applications. The Wink library currently has around 3,000 lines of code, which implements the low-level cryptographic operations for both uh, Signal and Telegram. And in both Signal and Telegram, we had to modify only a very small number of lines of code to hook into the cryptographic operations. And what we benchmarked is how much overhead you incur when you have to perform these cryptographic operations inside the secure world uh, using Wink. And as you can see that there is some overhead in the range of around 0.25 milliseconds or so. Uh, but this is completely negligible compared to how much time you would require to input a message into the messaging application. And as I mentioned before, Wink does not alter your message formats in any way, so your communication requirements or your bandwidth requirements do not uh, change at all. So in conclusion, this paper presents a new deniable secure messaging framework, which can be integrated with um, any of the shelf uh, secure messaging application today. Uh, it does not require any changes to your app functionality. It does not change your communication transcripts and the bandwidth requirements. It, has, it provides strong plausible deniability because it has a legitimate non-hidden use case, which you can use even if you're not interested in doing any hidden messaging. And finally, we have shown that this framework can be integrated with Signal and Telegram with minimal integration costs and overheads. Um, so uh, that's all I had for you today. Thank you. Uh, be happy to take questions.